What's going on you guys, Uncle Jesse here. Inside this box is a $200 resin 3D printer from monoprice.com. I picked this up over on amazon.com. It's a lot of dot coms there, but I was very interested in seeing what kind of results I can get out of a $200 resin 3D printer. This is just absolutely crazy to me that you can pick up a 3D printer that prints in resin for $200. This just blows my mind. So let's get it unboxed and set up and we'll take a look at the first set of prints here. All right, let me interrupt myself and my unboxing video. I've already got everything set up. I've already been using it for a day. I wanna to cut to the chase. You can continue watching after this little segment here to see the full unboxing and my initial uh, thoughts on getting the first print up and going and some of the challenges that I had with that. But what I wanted to do is just jump right into it and give you guys some of my initial impressions of the printer after working with it for the better part of a day. So let me jump into the things that I really liked about the printer. One, obviously, is the price point. $200 is just insane, as I mentioned before. But also the print volume that you're going to get with this, which is... It's 118 by 65 by 110 millimeters. That's actually fairly close to the Anycubic Photon. The Photon's a little bit larger vertically than this is, but for the rest of the dimensions, it's, it's fairly close. One of the other things I wanna to touch on is the auto bed leveling is absolutely amazing. I wish all of my other resin 3D printers had that same feature. This works extremely well. If this auto leveling works, I will be absolutely blown away. Holy crap, it is extremely well. I have had one print failure with this. Actually, sorry, no, I think I had two print failures, uh, but I think that I had to do mostly with user issues, not necessarily issues with the prints. Uh, and maybe changes to settings that I was monkeying around with as I was do doing a bunch of test prints. Another positive is that this printer is pretty quiet. I have this running right now. The fan's not super loud and the mechanism when it's going lifting up and down isn't crazy loud as well. Uh, the fumes that are coming out of this aren't super strong, which in some cases some of the other printers are. So it seems like it's doing a decent job of filtering that out. So that's a, a really good one here. The other thing that I wanted to mention is the color screen is pretty nice. Uh, the three button controls works really well. This again, a much better display than some of the other printers that I've worked with. And this is only 200 bucks. So one of the negatives that ended up being a positive, let's see if I can think of it that way, is that I had a absolute horrible time getting anything to print or a file format that would print with this machine. Because I'm on a Mac and I could not install the PC recommended software that they recommended, I was struggling, really struggling to find a solution to get this to work. Thankfully, I went onto the manufacturer's website and found out that there's a firmware update. Once I updated the firmware on this, I was able to use the Anycubic Photon file formatting, which means I was able to start using Cheetubox software. If you haven't already watched that, I have a video that covers the ins and outs of Cheetubox. I absolutely love using that for creating my resin files for supports. It's just super easy to work with and now I can actually use it as a slicer and then export and then load it on the printer here. That takes me into my first negative about this printer is it says that it has Wi-Fi. It does, but it doesn't. It's horrible, absolutely horrible. There is a browser-based slicer that you're supposed to be able to use if you can get the printer to connect to it. It's so finicky and just does not want to connect. I was able to get it to connect twice. In the process of slicing using the browser software, it dropped and stopped working. So I gave up on it and I just got fed up with it. So thankfully was able to get the firmware update in place. I was struggling at that point, pulling my hair out that I was not gonna be able to print with this. Uh, so maybe if you get this and you wanna try the web thing and the file browser, maybe it'll work better for you than it did for me on my network here. But hopefully someone will make some other alternative maybe, or there's maybe some other web-based alternative that could connect to this. I don't know, I haven't found anything just yet. But it's there, it just doesn't work that great. Uh, one thing that I call out in the video that you'll I obviously be sitting through and watching the unboxing and my initial talk through as I'm going through all of this, right? Right? Uh, is that a lot of this is made out of plastic. A lot of the other printers that I've owned 
uh, are have lots and lots of metal components. This is heavily plastic based. So on the internals of this, the vat that you're gonna be pouring the resin into, it's all plastic. The actual print head is all plastic. So uh, how that compares in the long run, I don't exactly know. It's just something I'm calling out. It's not a super big negative. I just wanted to throw it out there, make sure folks are aware that that's there. Uh, one of the other things that I'm assuming is because they were able to keep the price point so low is that this doesn't come with a lot of the other things, of the other tools and supplies you might need to just initially get started. So you get this little tiny bottle of resin, which I mean, okay, sure, I can buy some more resin. The problem is you're gonna need other things like uh, a spatula here, a metal spatula, sharp spatula to get your prints off of the print bed. Uh, that doesn't come with one of these. If you have another FDM 3D printer, you probably have one of these laying around, so it's not a problem. Uh, by the way, I'll have links down below to all these other little tchotchkes here that you might wanna pick up if you're deciding to get one of these 3D printers. So obviously a spatula here, a metal spatula, but you're also gonna want a, a, a plastic spatula. You're gonna use this in the vat. If you have a failed print, you're, it's gonna stick to the um, uh, to basically the print bed, and you're going to need to scrape it off. If you use this metal spatula here, it's gonna puncture a hole through the little thin piece of plastic. So this is what you can use to actually pull that up, or you can poke it with your hand on the bottom, and then use that combination to lift it, lift it off. Uh, you'll also need some of these little snippers here. You can use these, again, for if you're using FDM printing with filament here, but it's good to remove the actual supports. Uh, the other thing that you'll need is a funnel because what's gonna happen is you're gonna need at some point to change the resin out and you can't just pour it directly in here. There's lots of little debris that could break free. And so you're gonna also need not only a funnel, but also the filters. So these are just little paint filters that you can pop in here, then put this in your resin container, then pour it in and it's gonna strain out any of the debris that you might have. The other thing is that you're gonna be working with resin and you don't want that on your hands or in your mouth or in your eyes or anything like that. You're gonna need some rubber or plastic or whatever these little medical gloves are. I have to buy these by the box of a 100 I think at a time or 50 at a time, I can't remember the size this is. Anyways, I get these at Harbor Freight but you can get them on Amazon or Walmart or whatever like that. Uh, the other thing that you're going to need is isopropanol alcohol, IPA. Anything over 90% will work really well. You should be able to get these at your local drugstores for pretty cheap. I get them from Walgreens or Walmart. Um, but again, you're going to need that to actually clean the prints after it's printed. The other thing that you're going to need is potentially a curing station, some sort of UV lights, or if you don't want to go that method, you're going to need to uh, just stick these out in the sun. Uh, one other thing that I'd recommend getting is if you're going to get the IPA, you need some sort of container to put that in. And there is another YouTuber, and I apologize that I cannot remember your channel's name, and I could not find it for the life of me. But uh, I saw your video, I commented on your video as well, that he called out that, hey, here's a great idea that you can use, which is these pickle jars, these plastic pickle jars. So they seal shut, which is great, but you can put your IPA in there and then you put your print in and it's got this little basket and you can shake it while it's in here and it's gonna knock loose any of the extra resin and then you, your print will stick here at the bottom and you can just come in here and grab it and, and pull it out. It works so good, it works so, so good. Thank you for that suggestion. If you post your comment down below, uh, I will add a link to your channel. <laughs> I feel horrible that I could not find it. I was like looking for 10 minutes here before I started recording. Um, again, I have a print going here. It's one of the uh, these little figurines. I'm reprinting them again. Um, I, again, just the biggest issue I have right now is the layer lines. If I can get, find a way to solve this layer issue. I don't know if it's a print settings. I don't know if it's the printer, but the prints look decent. It's just the the layer lines that I'm getting here just really take it away from being a really amazing printer for a $200 price point. I will say with the layer line issue, I can't seem to see any of that on the test pig file that they provide you and you initially print. Really not seeing that. So I'm thinking it is down to something with the settings because my all of my other files, I can see it 
vaguely in some of these prints. Even the clear prints here, the calibration prints, I can find those. And I should mention as well, I did find a Facebook group. So someone started a Facebook group. There's only maybe a dozen or two dozen users in it so far. Uh, but if you're interested in this, I'll have links down to that as well because we're all collaborating and trying to figure out and sort these issues together because it's such a small community of users that have just recently acquired the machine here. Uh, but yeah, keep watching. I'll be going through the unboxing and setup and the initial prints of this, and you'll hear my reactions as I'm going through all this. I just want to say thanks in advance for watching, you guys. This is already way longer than I want it to be, and it's going to be even longer than this. So I just want to say thanks for hanging in there. If you're interested in this, again, I'll have links down below. I'll be doing some follow-up videos for this for sure. Make sure to follow me on social media. I've been posting tons of stuff on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, on both uh, any of the prints, I should say, with this. And uh, looking forward to getting this a, a solution in place for this. And if not, I'll just send it back to Amazon. That's why I bought it from Amazon. It'll be easy to return. So, hey, thanks again for watching, you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye now. Oh, uh, it's saying that you should go online and look at the manual. Looks like I've got my power pack, power supply there. I also have a very tiny bottle of resin. I'm assuming for 200 bucks, this is gonna be very bare bones. Sorry, also inside that box that I threw on the ground, it looks like there are some parts here and a micro, a 16 gig micro SD card and some wrenches that I'll probably need, a silicone pack here and the printer. So what's really cool about this is, again, it's 200 bucks. One, that's an awesome price point. Two, this thing is fully assembled. It <laughs> should, fingers crossed, fingers crossed this will just be pretty much plug and play. So Monoprice over the last few years has been getting into the 3D printing scene. They pretty much just rebrand some other company's 3D printer. I'll have to look up whose this actually is. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but it looks like a pretty nice small unit here. And yeah, it looks like I'll have a little bit to unwrap here to get this actually going and set up. So here I'm gonna readjust the camera, get a little bit zoomed in so you guys can see a little bit better view of what I'm doing. I'm not sure how that happened, but the cardboard has stuck to the vat here. It looks like there's maybe glue or tape. I'll have to scrape that off before I print anything. Oh, that's cool. The build plate is just a magnetic build plate. That's pretty interesting. Normally these are screwed into place, but this one is just a magnet that you can pop on and off. I wonder how difficult that's gonna be when it actually comes to when I need to remove the prints. Um, one of the first things I'm noticing as well with this is uh, a lot of this is made out of plastic versus a lot of the other 3D printers uh, like the Photon is probably the next lowest price resin printer that I'm familiar with. Uh, everything's metal that you're typically dealing with. This is plastic, 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 all a whole lot of plastic here, which is probably how they were able to get the price point down a good bit. But that's a pretty cool concept here, just having some really strong magnets to control that. Um, so here, I'm assuming this is the, I mean, obviously this is the vat. I'm just not sure how this vat is held into place here. Okay, so if you end up getting this printer, uh, one thing that you'll need to do is remove these two bolts. Those are there to keep that build plate secure during shipping or moving this thing around, you can then replace it with the bolts that you see here. This will allow you to more easily uh, remove the vat and pour out the resin when you need to do those sort of, sort of things here. So let me get these out and swap that out. Yep, this also uses a FEP system here, which is sort of like a screen, cell phone screen protector that you actually pour the resin on top of in this tub and then the print base will go in here, this little print bed will go in here and then the laser lights shoot up from the bottom here. So sometimes 
what will happen is your prints will get stuck to this plastic. But what's nice is it's very easily able to be swapped out. You should be able to unscrew these and put in a new piece of FEP sheet here that you can just order off of Amazon or other sites here. So I'm going to get this cleaned up real quick for here's the cardboard that was stuck to it. I'm going to use a little bit of isopropanol alcohol to clean that up. So again, this is a pretty bare bones kit that you're going to be getting here with the Monoprice printer. Uh, normally, what will end up happening is you get some uh, those those vinyl or plastic, you know, rubber gloves that you'll medical gloves that you'll see the disposable gloves. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, normally, it'll come with a few of those, maybe something a strainer to strain out the resin, maybe a little bit larger bottle of resin. Uh, all of those things aren't really necessary and probably helping keep the price point down. One thing that they did not skimp out on, which I was kind of expecting them to, is it does have a nice eight foot long power cord. I mean, I don't even think some of the other more expensive printers have an eight foot power cord. <laughs> They're usually five or six feet. Eight is absolutely awesome for me so I can string this power cord wherever I need it to go. So here, let me plug this in and fire this on up. All right, so after I fired up the printer, the very first thing that I saw was a way to connect my printer to the Wi-Fi network. I followed the bit.ly address that's there on screen and I got a 502 bad gateway. Uh, I'm gonna download the user manual off of Monoprice's website and give that a quick look here for the next steps. All right, so I've got their quick start guide up here on screen and just to give you a heads up, the micro SD card slot is on the side here. It's got these controls here. The bottom and top control allow you to move around the navigation here and the center one is a selection option. So I'm just following the quick start guide here which says go to control here. We'll navigate to clear. And yes, it's just, it looks like it's confirming that the LEDs are working or LCD screen is working, I should say. All right, I'm gonna shake up this sample resin that they sent over. Man, that is a tiny amount of resin. <laughs> That barely, barely covers the uh, the base there, but I figure that should be enough for this test print. We'll see. I'm gonna make sure this is on, which is interesting. I mean, normally you have to level these. This is this has an auto leveling feature, so we'll see how well this actually works here. Yeah, it says whenever the print is started, it will automatically calibrate the print platform, which is pretty cool. All right, uh, I'm going to attempt to print this. I don't know what file I'm supposed to select here. A dot .gif, that can't be right. What? Okay, it's a CWS file is what I'm looking for. There we go, I'm saying the default profile. There we go, okay. Man, it's a nice, it's got a color screen. It's not touch screen, but it's a color screen. If this auto leveling works, I will be absolutely blown away. Holy crap, it is. It just used this little gear mechanism to readjust the bed within the vat. That's super cool. Yeah, it's now it's printing. All right, let's see how this looks. Oh, it printed something. Let me put these gloves on. Oh, man, that's a little awkward. And there must be like a way that I can, I think I twist it. Oh yeah, I just supposed to twist it off. All right, here are two little test pigs. Pretty interesting, pretty cool. <laughs> I'm gonna have to find some other files here real quick and get those set up and get some more prints going. Let's check it out. All right, let me get this cleaned up and see how it turns out. I ended up using Cheetu Box Slicer to create this test print file that I was able to print after updating the firmware. I'll go into that more detail on that in just a minute, but uh, pretty cool. All right, here is a little test print file that I created. I just printed this off. They're little calibration posts that you can use. They take about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on your settings that you use for the printer. And available on Thingiverse, I'll have a link down below. These turned out, they look like they came out really 
nicely. Um, so far, this is <laughs> working much better than I anticipated. So I'm gonna go now, I'm gonna swap out this resin for some Ceratec resin that I have and do a, a larger test print. All right, another set of prints are done. Let's see how these turned out. Looks like uh, this was supposed to be three models. One clearly failed and is on top of this one here. Um, but it printed okay. It looks like it shifted slightly. I think I just didn't print this or I didn't orient this well enough. Uh, I also need to get these settings down. I'm gonna try and reprint this here and see how it turns out but excited to get this cleaned up and check it out. I'm definitely also getting a bunch of ribbing in here that I can see just immediately. I've gotta figure out what's causing that and how I can get that cleaned up. 